All right, everybody, let's do it. Our next segment is our No BS Web Revenue and Online Sales portion of the program. As you know, Mel Taylor Media, well, we got our start in radio here in Philadelphia, right? We uh, born and raised in Philadelphia, loving radio. We listen to radio all the time, and that's why we're going to focus and do our little digital diagnostic today. Dr. Harry Fingerman is going to assist putting the rubber gloves on so we can dig deep into the radio show. That's right. Once a year, the NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters, get together with the Radio Advertiser Bureau or the Radio Advertising Bureau, and they put on a show this year down in Dallas. And let's dig deep to see whether the radio show has helped broadcasters or has kept them in the dark or has kept them neutral or whatever. If you need details, maybe the slides, the podcast, if you missed it today, you want to watch it again, tell all your friends, share it with all your colleagues, go to MelTaylorMedia.com and give us your email address. We'll make sure you get a copy of this webinar and podcast, okay? You all know I worked in radio for a long time in Philadelphia, middays at WISP, after Howard Stern, right before John DeBella. And uh, this station doesn't exist anymore. Now it's simulcasting the sports station in town. Also worked at WDRE, the alternative station, WPST, some top 40 there. And that is why, you know, it was my dream to maybe one day be on stage with guys like this, winning awards. Dan Mason won 113, no, was that? It's 114 awards down in Dallas a few weeks ago. It was amazing. He actually had to put an addition on his house just to house all the freaking awards he's won. Do you need any more awards? Come on, seriously. It's... It's the radio show was all about you're great. We not gonna we're not really gonna look at your flaws. We're just gonna say that you're awesome, man. Here they're all getting together. Did you know that the RAB to get everybody to register over two thousand attendees? Once you registered for the show, you automatically won an award. That is a spectacular tool to get attendance up. It's a mutual admiration society. You know, teams change partners every six months, but you two go on and on together. What's the secret? Should we tell them? Let's. We belong to a mutual admiration society. My partner and me, oh, we belong to a mutual admiration society. I say he's got that certain air. He looks so handsome way up there. I say that he's a natural wit. I claim it's just the opposite. I think he dresses nice and neat. He's the Bob Rumble of the beat. And we go on like that till day is gone. All right, I think we get the uh, I think we get the picture here. Beautiful Deb Parenti, beautiful woman, smart, professional, incredibly helpful. This shot was gonna be spectacular. Dan had to get in the way. Here, Craig Kitchen is talking with Erica Farber, and they're discussing how Craig, just through a stroke of luck, has a similar haircut to, to Mitt Romney. And here it is, a great shot. Scott Herman of CBS cozying up to Jerry Lee of B101 Radio in Philadelphia. This shot occurred just moments after Scott was seen whispering in Jerry's ear, Jerry. Come on, tell me, how can CBS get just a small piece of that hot AC money? <laughs> Kurt Johnson, he's a senior VP of programming of Town Square Media. And he won the very first NAB RAB award for most handsome radio executive of the year. <laughs> ah, Jeff and Jeff. Jeff and Jeff. Now, Jeff Haley is not going to say anything about Jeff Smullyan and his $5,000 suit. And Jeff is Jeff Smullyan. He's wearing a $5,000 suit and a button-down white shirt. That is a faux pas that really makes me lose sleep at night. But these two guys, uh, uh, Jeff, they're both smiling. But now the guy on the left, Jeff Smullyan, he's pretty happy because he unloaded MS Interactive on the guy on the right, Jeff Haley <laughs> of Marketron formerly of the RAB. It's kind of a big incestuous thing, you know what I'm saying? So that's why these both both these guys are smiling, but who really got the better of the deal? Hmm. You know, Jeff's working real hard trying to get cell phone manufacturers to install an FM chip 
Of course, you know, he doesn't want to hear about how Kodak and Canon didn't beg mobile phone companies to put a, <clears throat> put a camera lens in the phone. Because let's face facts, consumer demand would push a phone manufacturer like Samsung or Motorola to put whatever in the phone based on consumer demand. Well, consumers are not demanding an FM chip. But God bless you, Jeff. You know, sometimes you do have to keep on uh, keeping on. And uh, we're not a big fan that you're focused so much on that. But we do love the fact, Jeff, that you were smart enough. And you're a smart man. But, man, you're brilliant. Getting rid of Emmis Interactive. You're selling the interactive unit of Emmis to Marketron. That is beautiful because you know it's always best to sell high and buy low. You sold this unit at its highest value because it's not getting any higher. It's only going to go down. And you got rid of it just in time because Jeff, we know it. Jeff, he reads our blog all the time. Jeff knows that selling all this stuff, MS Interactive stuff, like content management systems and streaming and plugins and loyalty programs, he knows that is not a growing business, especially for MS. You know why? Yep, because WordPress. WordPress is the ultimate CMS content management system. It's easy to use. It's cheap, easy to learn, dramatically more powerful. You know, even CBS uses WordPress. That's right. Loyalty programs, why pay a buttload of money when you can go with, you know, best of breed providers like AWeber or Constant Contact or MailChimp? Or why spend all that money with, with bandwidth? and hosting a video. Why not go with companies like Vimeo? They all work together. Jeff, you the man. That's why you're smiling. And did you hear about this secret meeting at the RAB show in Dallas? Yeah, the secret meeting that everybody freaking knew about. And the people that were not invited to the secret meeting, they were pretty ticked off. Because, you know, there's about 100 people invited to the secret meeting. So that the other 100 people that felt they should have been there kind of spread the word. The secret meeting. Not only is there that Kurt Hansen rain summit thing going on, in addition to the RAB show at the NAB, but there's a secret meeting internally at the NAB RAB radio show. Are you following along here? They're all getting together because they're freaked out. They're saying, guys, how many years have gone by and we've gone nowhere? We've been buying snake oil from all these vendors and research people, feeding us a bunch of bullshit. At, you know, they're just freaking us out, scaring the bejesus out of us. Every year goes by, and we're losing more and more local advertising share. Streaming and all this stuff and the shiny new objects, and somebody's telling us we need apps. Somebody's saying we need more engagement. You know, all these gurus are coming in talking about stuff like, you need more social media. You need more user engagement. Have you noticed that all the people trying to tell us what to do with digital in our radio industry, guess what? They have no sales background. They're all technology people or programming people or marketing geeks. So take a look at the secret meeting. Radio meets in secret today discuss the future of digital. So who's in this secret meeting? Let's zoom in here a little bit to enjoy this secret meeting because you know it's going to be nothing but brilliant people. And uh, could you imagine being a part of this? It's all day long. I like tune in. We like tune in. More discussion. You know, F Freddie, we love Freddie Jacobs, but more research. And then from 1025 all the way up till noon, more freaking research. And then you eat and you're all tired, ready to fall asleep. And guess who they put on? Jeff and the digital radio panel and Bob Struble and all that stuff. And then licensing fees. And Erica says that this is how RAB is going to help. And then the milkman comes on and he provides more insight. And Smith Geiger comes in and then social radio comes in for more crap. I don't even know who social radio is, but I know one thing. They're trying to convince radio. They got to become more social, man. More social because Facebook and Twitter is where it's at. Really? Then by 3.15, Kurt Hansen and AccuRadio. You know, Kurt's a great guy, but you know that if he has, what, he has 20 minutes? You know, 19 minutes, and out of those 20, it's going to be discussions about Star Trek, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's only going to be about 12 minutes of, 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 of what Captain Kirk would do. 
and then more research, and then more research, and then they adjourn. And then by 6 o'clock, after this is done, they all get together and say, what the fuck was all that about? <laughs> oh, here are all the people that uh, were planning to attend. Good, all the Beasleys were there, and Bonneville, and Cox people. Hmm, a lot of people from Cox. MS, how many of them were really there? Entercom, AB Van Hook, Federated, blah, 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 blah. Yep, could you imagine how far down the field they put that football? We bet it just made things worse. Too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Chances are the secret meeting was a bitch session. A holy crap, what are we going to do? Because they're afraid of stuff like Pandora you know, picking up momentum. Disrupting that $16 billion radio advertising market. Radio's listenership is up. They had 427 employees last year, now up to 589. A majority of the new hires are in sales, specifically local sales. The internet radio leader, Pandora, is scary as heck to all these people inside of the secret meeting. And all the vendors and the research people and the gurus are all trying to scare the bejesus out of all these radio folks. Because they know Pandora, not just taking listeners. They could give a flying hoot about taking listeners from terrestrial radio. What they really care about, if I'm a radio executive, I don't care if you're taking my listeners. What I really care about is you're taking my money and you're taking my local advertisers away. That is the most important thing. The advertiser relationship is more important than page views, unique users, user engagement, all that crap means nothing if you don't have a primary relationship with the local advertiser. Protect that with your life because your business depends on it. Pandora stock upgraded recently from neutral to buy. Stocks for internet radio company Pandora jumped almost 12% today after it released its second quarter profit report this afternoon. Pandora's revenue jumped 51% from a year earlier to $101.3 million. Analysts had expected the Oakland-based company to post just over $100 million in sales. It's not just Pandora and other internet and digital technologies that, well, quite frankly, are bothering the radio industry, but... Radio cannot get over the huge mistake that they made years ago with this guy, Mark Cuban. Yep, Mark Cuban is the guy that came up with the idea of, hey, don't worry about that streaming. You guys want to sell radio spots. I'll stream your radio station over my audio net. Him and his college buddies got together and said, we want to hear these games and we got to figure out a way of doing that. So they created AudioNet. Eventually it became Broadcast.com. And today, not only is Mark Cuban a zillionaire, but he's winning, he's winning trophies. He owns basketball teams. He has a beautiful family. He has his own private jet. He lives in a home like this. And this freaks out the radio guys because they know that, well, they believe they were snookered by Mark Cuban. But Mark Cuban, all he did was he offered a service and radio took him up on it because radio is so focused on its incumbent business model, its legacy business model. Broadcast.com is the reason why radio is really very gun-shy. Radio has to take the blinders off. Radio has to look outside of radio. There's very little innovation inside of radio. The innovation is happening outside of radio. What's more important, audio streaming, applications and apps, mobile, texting, social media, loyalty clubs? That's not your business. Playing music, it's not your business. Your business is in helping the local business community make money. Remember a few years ago when Lowry Mays of Clear Channel had the audacity to say that he's really in the business of like ringing the cash register for the local businessman. And he was berated for that because all the other radio people said, no, we're in the business of providing community help and entertainment and information. No, 
you're in the business of helping the local businessman sell his wares. And you use news and information and music to attract those ears. Or in the case of the web, those eyes. Your primary business is holding on to that local advertiser. They subsidize your business. And you use news and information to gather that audience. Your business is helping the local advertiser. And you're lucky. You are blessed that you have a stick, a transmitter, a brand. You have a radio station to get that done. That's the business you are in. So pull your head out of you know where. Radio talks about innovation. Now, we like Cox Media, but Cox in Connecticut put all this time and effort, maybe not a lot, but they actually think something like ctboom.com is digital innovation. Cox Media launches a standalone website in Connecticut. Described as a standalone entity focused with a local take on pop culture, news, sports, music, and area happenings. How is that different from any other thing that's out there? Can you see how it's a mutual admiration society and nobody wants to call out Cox or specifically Cox Media in Connecticut that the emperor is not wearing any clothes? CTBoom.com. Well, Cox Media says, from a business perspective, the unique spin is that this site is completely separate from CMG Connecticut's radio stations. What does, hell, what does that mean? That's a unique spin? The only connection is cross-promotion opportunities. What the hell does that mean? This isn't a press release. And then somebody from Cox Media in Connecticut says, I'm extremely thrilled to get deeper into digital space by developing one of the most unique sites currently available in Connecticut. you got to be kidding me. What's missing here? Oh, that's right. Where's the salespeople? Where's somebody with direct sales, with revenue background? Where's that person involved in this project? Sorry, nowhere to be found. You know, while Cox Media in Connecticut is busy talking about innovation and putting together sites that, um, quite frankly, are just one in 1,000 sites that are just like that, you know, what's being missed here is the fact that there's a company actually going after the most important part of our business, and that's local advertisers. That's right. Local advertisers are being courted and being approached by outsiders like Google. Google has this initiative called Get Your Business Online. And matter of fact, they do it in every state. In many cities, they come in and they help the local business. Yup. That's the business radio should be in. Now, take a look here. This is NBC Television in Connecticut. They foolishly actually do a story, a TV story, on how Google is helping local business get online. For many, Google has helped make life easier. Now Google is trying to make the Internet easier for small businesses. We're here to uh, help small businesses get online. It's estimated that over 50% of Connecticut small businesses have no online presence. Representatives from Google help business owners and entrepreneurs get connected through workshops and one-on-one -on -one instruction. It's not really that hard, but you know people don't know how to do it. So this is their chance to sit down with the experts and really go through it. Have you ever used YouTube at all? Connecticut Get Your Business Online attracted over 700 business owners and those planning on starting a business. So we're just in the early stages and the thinking stages. The thing's absolutely free and we're going to go to a couple workshops today and uh, hopefully come out of it with some good information to go forward with. The lesson of this event is that an effective online presence is essential to success in the 21st century. Ryan Hanrahan, NBC Connecticut News.